short time ago, I talked with Judge Kavanaugh's attorney, Beth Wilkinson. There are now calls, not only the Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, but all 10 Democrats on the Senate Judiciary Committee are calling for Kavanaugh to withdraw his nomination. Is he considering that at all? No, he's not. And it's very unfortunate that it's come to this today. Um, I'm shocked by the allegations that were just extraordinary, that they were just dropped on the public today and on the committee. If you read those allegations, they mean that tens and tens of men and women were involved with gang rape and binge drinking and all that goes along with that for years and no one reported it and no one reported it since Judge Kavanaugh has been in this process. If this allegation has merit, I don't understand why her attorney didn't bring it forward before and why he hasn't gone to the police. The Democrats are saying, why not just put the brakes on everything and tell the FBI to reopen this background investigation? I mean, that's up to the Senate Judiciary Committee to they decide. They say it's up to Judge Kavanaugh It's really to call not. for it's really not. He's part of this process. The, the Senate is in charge of this process. They run the investigation. They run the hearing. He has said what he knows, which is he absolutely didn't do, do this. He doesn't even know this woman. And he has submitted himself to questions under the penalty of perjury over and over again. He's said repeatedly he's never engaged in this kind of uh, conduct. And I, I wonder why these people didn't come forward when Judge Kavanaugh has been in the limelight for months months and if they thought that these allegations had any merit they should have come forward before and there would have been plenty of time to do whatever they want to do but you have to question the motives when they come forward with the most salacious most outrageous allegations the day before the hearing senator flake said today on the on the speech on the floor that no matter what happens even if they get to a yes and no vote that this is going to have some doubt surrounding it i understand what he's saying because this process what it's become is so demeaning and degrading for our country. I, I don't know why anyone would ever want to put their name in the hat for a, a public office name if we're going to do this to people. I think there is going to be a pale over everyone for how they participated in this. And it, you wouldn't haul out and make accusations against someone the day before they were going in front of a hearing. You just wouldn't do that. N normal people, <laughs> even when they're opposed to Judge Kavanaugh, which again, they have every right to be, would never do that. And so it just makes everybody look like, you know, they're politicizing the Supreme Court and the, and the approval process. I talk to a lot of people and they say it just feels bad to them, no matter what side you're on. Listening to Judge Kavanaugh and his wife on that interview with Martha the other night, is he more indignant, angry? I know he's, he's very upset about it because he knows he didn't do it. But, you know, he's a judge. He's not a television person. He's not a trial lawyer like I am. And so he's not used to talking about these things and being on television. And it's, I think, embarrassing in front of his family and his two daughters to talk about, you know, that he drank at times in excess when he was in college, about dating girls and what happened. It's not a comfortable position for him. That doesn't mean he doesn't have to answer the questions. He understands that comes with the, the job interview. And he's not saying feel sorry for him. But yes, he's, he's, he's outraged by this most recent allegation because it, it suggests that for years, years, there was gang rape going on and no one said anything. A multitude of women and, uh, you know, a, a large number of men were involved. It doesn't say actually he was involved. It says he was present, which he was not. He doesn't even know this woman. But this is a whole different level of allegation. We're in this environment, obviously. Uh, people are being told that they need to come forward. Two out of three don't really right. talk about it. But here you have the end of the line, and there are a number of women coming forward. Well, I don't, I mean, I, I think some of the women didn't want to come forward. As I understand it, for Dr. Blasey Ford, she didn't want to come forward, and someone leaked her name. I, I feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for anyone who's associated with this process, a Mark Judge, uh, who Judge Kavanaugh was friends with, you know, some of the other people who were supposedly at this party that everyone says did not happen and, and they don't recall it. And it's, of course, not consistent with Judge Kavanaugh, what they know about him and what he did way back in high school and college. But everybody is demeaned by this process. And somebody leaked that information. I don't understand why this information with you know, by, brought forward by Mr. Avenatti was, you know, held back until today. And I think I understand why it makes everyone feel uncomfortable because sexual assault is a very serious claim and it's difficult for women to talk about it. And it shouldn't be politicized on either side. It is not fair to the women and it's not fair to the men who, who can be accused or wrongly accused. So when they keep saying it needs to be investigated by the FBI, 
What is the thought in your corner? Why didn't they call the police? When the day Mr. Avenatti started representing her, no one stopped him from going to the police or the FBI. In fact, as I understand it, the Senate Judiciary Committee just sent him the phone numbers of the FBI. He knows what he's doing. Also today, the lawyer for uh, Dr. Blasey Ford, ahead of this testimony tomorrow, put out, uh, said she's not going to put out the medical records and the notes, but she did put out the polygraph uh, that she apparently took on August 7th uh, that comes to the conclusion, according to this paperwork, that it's not indicative of deception, her answers uh, to this polygraph. Does that mean, mean anything to you? You know, that was up, up to Dr. Blasey, and again, she, she, you know, has her reasons for not wanting to come forward before, and, and that's, that's up to her. But the notes from her that, that I read about in the Washington Post were that there were notes that her therapist made in, in, in couples therapy and that they don't seem to match up with what people are saying about what happened now. And so those would be relevant because that was the first time she supposedly ever talked about this. And I would have hoped that they would turn over the notes, but of course they're saying they're medical records, they don't want to do that. Again, that's up to them. You know, she obviously said she wanted to be anonymous, right. but yet in August takes a polygraph, hires an attorney. What is the thinking about the reasoning behind that? I think what's sad here is that Judge Kavanaugh knows that he didn't do this, and when these allegations come out at the last minute, it's almost impossible, you know, to disprove when someone says it at the last minute. Is he worried that she's going to come off as credible in this hearing? and that they're going to lose one or two votes. Honestly, he's not thinking about her other than I think he, you know, understands that she didn't want to be public about this either. He wants to come forward in front of the American public and explain that he didn't do this. And he'll answer any questions that the Senate Judiciary Committee has, and he'll tell the truth. And that's the best he can do. He doesn't like the process, uh, how it's turned out. But he understands that, you know, that's his obligation and he's going to do it. And he's answered those questions before and he'll answer them again. And does he worry at all about getting onto the Supreme Court and then somehow this doesn't stop? And that they go after him continually for impeachment or something else? Well, I think we all worry that if we lose the dignity of the process, it can affect the su su Supreme Court and everybody involved. But I think at this point, he has had investigation after investigation for background. He's had a long period where the public was allowed to look at him, you know, ask questions to the Judiciary Committee. Senators have asked him questions in public and in private. All that's taken place. And all that was there for a reason. We, we, we are there to, people are there to decide what they think and whether the senators will vote for him or not, and they're allowed to do that. But it can't be that when people make last-minute allegations and throw, you know, character assassination at him, that therefore the, the answer is to step back and to not, you know, go forward. These people deserve to have their hearing, and the senators deserve to vote as they think they should. And he's in it for the long haul. Yes. I mean, you know, it's been awful for him and his family and his daughters, but it's been worse. I think he feels worse for the, the American public and for the process.